Hey, this is Daryl on our third episode. Boy, this is really exciting. We were down here in Tallahassee, and, man, we got some fantastic food prep site, uh, food prep preparations of brisket and ribs, and my goodness, I don't know what all, but uh, first up, we got a man who bought a Dodge truck, and he just ain't too happy. All right, we're down here in Tallahassee, Florida, and this guy has got a great big 3500 Dodge. Uh, tell us how you feel about your Dodge. Never owned it ever. Uh, the Cummins motor is great, but it's a 2007 Dodge. I bought it new. Uh, it's 69,000 miles. I've got $4,000 in repairs. The Dodge will not stand behind. The clutch went out at 50,000 miles. That's a $2,000 repair. Uh, and if you want to put an updated clutch in it for $3,000, uh, the clutch should last a lot longer. Otherwise, you pay $2,000, you could probably go put another clutch in at 50,000 miles. My air compressor, air conditioning, locked up at 69,000 miles. That was another $1,200. Anyway, I've got $4,000 in repairs on this truck that I bought new in 07. And uh, I'll never own another Dodge. Man. So you say you like the Cummins motor. The only problem is it's wrapped in a Dodge. That's it. Cummins is hard to beat, but it's wrapped in a Dodge. Uh, there's been nothing wrong with the motor, and it does its job very well. It just, the small stuff falls apart on it, and Dodge won't stand behind it. An air conditioner at 69,000 miles is, is on you. A clutch at 50,000 miles, again, is on you. Uh, I've drove lots of vehicle, standard transmission vehicles, but I've never had a clutch go out of 50,000 miles. And when I got to researching it, that's pretty much the norm. Wow. I wouldn't, want to, on these I wouldn't want to pay $2,000 every 50,000 for a clutch? No. Well, uh, you know what? You would you would qualify for the Ford Challenge. Now, uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to get Ford to maybe uh, sponsor us and give us a few trucks. And uh, this man right here, we would love to give an F450 and put him on the road for a year and let barbecue superstars follow him and let's monitor how his truck do. Would you consider doing that? Yeah, that would. All right, Ford. He's a Ford Challenge candidate. Next, we got Drew Levanus up. He's our cameraman and he's getting involved he's a fantastic guy and i tell you all you gals out there you can't help but think he looks like a movie star but uh he did a big interview with dad's barbecues coming up next and we also have some fantastic meat prep we got a whole bunch of brisket and a whole bunch of ribs and and uh we're going back to get some chicken dad's barbecue has three locations in alabama and it's coming up next all right, this is Drew Levinis with uh, Barbecue Superstars, and I'm standing here with Randy, who's uh, owner of uh, three restaurants in Alabama, uh, Dad, uh, Dad's Barbecue. And uh, Randy, man, it's, it's a pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, how, how long have you um, had your rest restaurants open? Uh, about six years now. Yeah? Yeah. And uh, they're located in uh, what parts of Alabama? Uh, we're in Anson, Alabama, which is in between uh, Birmingham and Atlanta. Then we have one that's uh, further north in Gaston, Alabama, Rainbow City. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, so uh, how long have you been doing uh, uh, barbecue competitions? Uh, this is only our second year to do competitions. We've been uh, busy in the restaurant, so we, we didn't think we had enough time to do this, but uh, we, we're making time. We enjoy it, having a good time. That's great. That's great. I know uh, getting out here and being around all these people in the barbecue world, it's just a hat in time, hat in time. And so uh, what made you decide to uh, get into a, a barbecue competition? Well, basically, the guys inside here, they uh, they live and breathe barbecue all, all the day, trying to figure out what to do and how to do it, and uh, uh, they kept pushing me enough where I said, well, okay, we'll get out here and try it. And uh, um, But those guys, they, they're the one that pushes me because I do enough with the restaurants, but they wanted to get out here and try what they wanted to do, and, and it's worked out. We're doing, we're doing good. That's great. That's great. I know it puts, uh, you know, it's a lot of time and effort that goes in, not, not only the restaurant, but uh, these competition stuff, you know, bringing your own meat. I know that gets expensive and uh, wood and all that stuff. So I'm sure, uh, I'm sure, you know, that's a, uh, it's a handful, I'm sure. Yes, it is. So I, I'm guessing you're, you're happy to have these guys with you, though, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, well, I get to stand out here and do this while they're in there prepping all the food and everything. So I... I, I, I'm kind of relaxed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. So what do you think? Uh, can you give us an idea of like how much it would it cost to actually put on a, a competition? Or not a competition, but a team together for like a weekend to uh, compete? Uh, well, not including hotel rooms. That's, you know, we've got probably almost $500 worth of meat in there, plus uh, uh, gas. That's going to run us about $200. Mm -hmm. And a uh, hotel room. For three nights, about two hundred dollars also. So you're looking at somewhere eight hundred to a thousand dollars, you know, yeah. for a weekend. 
Yeah, that, 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 that's expensive. That's expensive, but I know it's well worth it. It's well worth it. Oh, yeah. uh, how many competitions do you think you're going to do this year? We're thinking uh, at, at least four, maybe six. We're going to try. Uh, we'll go back to Knock Little Falls uh, in, in uh, Gaston, Alabama, then Sloss Furnace in Birmingham, Alabama, and probably Whistle Stop up in Huntsville, Alabama. Stay, stay a little closer this time. We, this is our long trip. This is a long trip. <laughs> I hear you. Trip. I hear you. Uh, well, that's great. Well, that's great. Well, Daryl's inside uh, taking some shots of the uh, the, the food prep. Uh, uh, Dad's barbecue has been nice uh, enough to let us uh, get some meat shots. So hopefully uh, you all enjoy those shots here in a bit. And, uh, yeah, we're smoking it down here in Tallahassee at the Pig Fest. And I uh, uh, hope everything's going well at your home. And uh, barbecue's about food, family, friends, and fun. And we'll see you later on in the show. Okay, we're gonna prep a little brisket. What's your name? I'm Jesse. Jesse, okay. What's the name of your team? Uh, Dad's Barbecue. Dad's Barbecue. Basically, what we've done is cut the, uh, the uh, points off of these. We'll trim these down into chunks, make burn ends, okay. you know, just as an appetizer, stuff like that. Basically, there's some prepared brisket. It's already been trimmed. Next, it'll be injected, rubbed, and set. And uh, that's what we're doing, man. Okay, so the pullet, pullet was like that corner uh, up on the brisket. Yeah, basically what you got on the brisket, you got two different pieces. You got what they call a flat, and you got a pullet, which is the roast end. Okay. And as you can see, here's where those two muscles come together. Yeah. How do you handle your um, the thick piece of fat on top? You just leave it on for the cup? What you do is you want to basically in the all you're going to use out of these briskets for a competition is from here to here. This is going to be a little tougher. This is going to be a little drier. And you want a good solid quarter inch or more because it's going to render it also. Okay. You know, so a lot of people, there's a lot of different philosophies on that. Mm -hmm. uh, but we try to keep up. A steady quarter, see? Yeah. yeah. Right there. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, in a brisket, in a competition, you only use a, a very small piece of it. Okay. You know, just like here, we trim that down, try to get our quarter down here where we're going to be using that. Okay. Okay, well, we're getting ready to inject. We'll shoot the injection. Yeah. Uh, we'll get this right here. Okay, and that's your burn ends. That's your yeah. Okay. That's a USDA prime. See that module? Wow, that is beautiful. Yeah. Man. Unfortunately, that's the best part of it. <laughs> <laughs> what brand of brisket is that? Is that a certain company's brisket? Or? That comes from SRA Foods. Yes, SRA Foods. They're lo located here? Yeah, they're in, uh, no, they're actually in the Snake the River. They're in uh, Birmingham. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, okay. they're in Birmingham. SRA Foods. Yeah. You see, uh, Dad's uses for all the meat. Pork uh, butts, uh, ribs, chicken, those types of things. Jonathan, where's your injector at? Um, I'm watching. It's right here. Okay, and then we've got the injecting juice. We're not going to ask you what's in it, but we just give a picture of it. It's just a base of beef stock with some stuff. You know. Okay. And basically, what you want to do. See how, see how that feels? Yeah. And we'll try to do one inch increments. And there again, a brisket is the hardest two inch at two. After they after they injected, they'll be wrapped. Go back in the cooler for resting until the night. 
So when you're done injecting, how many, how, how, how much do you think the risk probably weighs after the injection? How much weight do you get to add to it? Probably about it. 18, 12 ounces. Uh -huh. You're not going to get a ton of injection in that brisket because of what the fibers are. Uh -huh. Now, pork butt, you can add a pound, a pound and a half. Blow that thing up. You can, you can make it huge, you know. But basically, the brisket, you're just trying to get something in there. And it, and it is the hardest for me to inject. Because of just the way the muscle fibers are. You know, in, in barbecue, it's an interesting choice that they chose the brisket because it's like a challenging piece of meat. Very, it's the toughest piece. Yeah. We only use right hand briskets. That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> and then, basically, after that's injected, Friends, that ain't chocolate. That's barbecue sauce. <laughs> Man, more to the story. He went down to the Dodge place and what in the world happened? I asked to speak to the general manager because of all these uh, repair bills. And uh, the general manager, when I told him I had uh, $4,000 in repairs, the Dodge wouldn't stand behind it 69,000 miles. And when I told him that, I said, and I bought the truck new, of course, I said, uh, if you were in my shoes at $4,000 or 69,000 miles, would you buy another Dodge? And there was an audience of customers in, in there, and everybody was looking, and he looked at me, and he looked me dead in the eye and said, no, I would not. <laughs> Vero Beach Dodge Chrysler Plymouth, in, uh, or Dodge Chrysler in Vero Beach, Florida. And the general manager told you if he had them repairs, he wouldn't buy a Dodge. He wouldn't, I wouldn't buy one either. <laughs> <laughs> he don't get no better than that. <laughs> so you're going, he's going to go mustard on it. All mustard does is give you a slather to hold your rub. Okay, a else. binding agent. That's it. Spend a lot less time on the fat cap than you do the meat side. Leaving that fat on top of the uh, meat just adds a lot of flavor to the meat. It really does. We use it. Our smokers are water based, so they actually do a steam and a smoke. So we use a fat layer to separate the heat from the meat. Oh yeah. You know, a lot of people like to render their fat and let it drip. To me, you save a lot more moisture with your fat cap down because uh, it, it's a seal, it's a barrier. Uh -huh. Now, if you were going to the supermarket and you were going to try to pick out a brisket, uh, could you show us on that brisket what you'd try to look for as uh, the higher quality or better quality brisket? You will, uh, in a store, it's very difficult. If you can find, if you buy them froze, there's no really way. But if you've got a uh, a fresh brisket. You'll want to pick that brisket up and it should be fairly limber. Okay. And if you can, you want to see marbling just as we talked about throughout the meat. Heavy marbling because if not, brisket will blind up like she left. Yeah, it's like a real hard piece of meat. It's a very hard piece of meat. Uh, okay, so you're using Oak Ridge Barbecue's rub. We use Oak Ridge rubs. There's something special about this barbecue team. They got it going on, don't they? Yeah, they do. <laughs> well, like I said, you're not going to waste, a, in our opinion, we don't waste a lot of time on the fat cap. Like Oak Ridge Rubs, right? They're out of uh, Kansas City. They use a high quality sugar base of raw sugars, which have a higher burning point. You don't get a real black charcoal bark. It tastes bitter. Okay. You know, that's the key to your raw sugars. 
Uh, and what type of sugar did you say to use? It's a, it's a raw sugar. Oh, it's some kind of raw sugar. It's a, I'd rather not say, but it, okay. No, it's, it's, okay. Just a, it's just a high quality sugar. Well, on the radio show, I'm sure many of you heard me say that, uh, you know, uh, you don't start basting your brisket till it's about halfway cooked or three quarters of the way cooked. And uh, you don't put barbecue sauce on it, if you want barbecue sauce, till the last hour. We'll but use uh, no sauce. But no, you don't use any sauce? Not on a brisket. Not on a brisket. Okay, that's interesting. We will save, we will save natural juices and mix some stuff with it. And then we'll do a light glaze as it's presented. But as far as the sauce on the brisket, I think that's the key is let the brisket speak for itself. Okay. And if you've got a good brisket, it should, uh, it should stand on its own. There's your prepared brisket. Wow. Ready for wrap. Okay. I need a marinade for as long as we can at competition. At home, we'll do them 24 hours. Now, the wrap, is it tinfoil or is it tinfoil? I mean, uh, saran wrap. Saran wrap, plastic. Yeah. Okay, go pop in the refrigerator and then let it pull, them, pull the yeah, flavors that's in. That's right. Okay. Hey, Tallahassee, Florida, they're getting it loaded up. They're getting it rock and roll. They're getting all the stuff out of here. There's that F-450 that we took a shot of earlier. Look at this. Yeah, that's a nice truck. Yeah, that is a nice truck. Got the F-4 van pulling around there. Tallahassee. Go ahead. Two things I thought of with Dodge, this Dodge that have really dumbfounded me, and that is one, once in a while when you fire it up, when you turn fire the truck up, the cab just shakes and it won't run. It'll idle, but it won't run. And you take it in and they run, they, they do diagnostics on stuff. They're unable to diagnose that problem. All they can say is it doesn't do it while it's here, but we don't know what's, what's wrong. And then occasionally, I think it's what you call a kill switch. I'll turn it off and take the key out of the ignition and the truck's still running. And I took it to Dodge and I told him that too. So you need to fix this. Their response to that was they can replace the ignition switch for $260. However, the caveat was they wouldn't guarantee that fixes the problem because they can't get it to do it while it's there at the dealership. Oh, so my God. This is, this is Dodge's official word, Vero Beach, Dodge. Their official Hello. word is, I can have the, the ignition switch replaced for $260, but it may or may not fix the problem because they couldn't get it to do it while it was there. And soon as my wife was with me, we picked the truck up and I said, well, I'm not going to spend $260 for something that may or may not fix the problem. And they said, well, it's not doing it right now. We no further drove down the street. The very first stop we got to, we shut the truck off and I had the key in my hand and still running. Oh my God, that's dangerous. So you can't... This truck has problems that they can't even diagnose. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Buy a Ford. Now friends, uh, I just want to put in here that we have not set this up. I do not know this man. Never met before. Never met you before. Uh, my name is Mark Badley. I have all the receipts from Dodge. I bought this truck brand new. I'm the only man that's ever drove it, except for maybe a friend a short, short distance. So this is... I have no reason to lie to you. I wish I'd have bought a better truck. But I can tell you, I will never own a Dodge again. Uh, and I welcome anyone. I will show them their receipts. We can look up the history on this truck. I think I'd be bound liable, bill held liable, libelous if I was making any of this up. But uh, unfortunately, this is all true story. This is reality TV at its best, and it's just hard to believe we ran into this man by Ford. Can tell you a little bit about what they're doing. Pulling all the silver skin off the membrane off the bottom of the ribs. Turning that fat, scraping the fat off, getting all the. Okay, you've already got the uh, uh, the uh, membrane. membrane off of it. So now you're coming in between the bones and. Uh, yeah, because you've got plenty of fat anyway. Mm -hmm. Just the side.
you got to start out with a decent cut of meat. Yeah, you know, that's one thing uh, Johnny Trey kept saying on the radio show was that, you know, if you don't start off with a real high-quality piece of meat, then you're not going to be able to uh, formulate it into something. Uh, uh, what, what brand of ribs do you guys? Is this from SRE also? These are uh, Hormel St. Louis style. Okay, Hormel. They come out from the same company. You get this silver skin off it. It's a job. get off the better it is. And what's your name? John. Okay, and you're with what's the team? Dad's. Dad's barbecue. Now they friends they got restaurants, uh, they got everything. Uh, down in Alabama. There's one ready to go. Okay. Okay, now it'd be interesting to see. Do you use the same rub, the Oak Ridge rub on the ribs that you use it's on? A, it's an Oak Ridge rub, but it's a different rub. It's a different rub. It's a different rub. So there's a brisket rub that you there's use. A, there's a brisket rub, and then there's a there's a, a poultry, game bird, chicken, that kind of stuff. How did you guys find out about Oak Ridge's rubs? It's a long story. No, really? Uh, I read a lot of uh, Old Dave Pope on the block. Uh -huh. He's a competition guy out of uh, Indiana, I believe. Mm -hmm. He's been cooking competition about 25 years. And uh, he got a link to another blog, uh, another competitor, and they wrote a whole story on him. And we got to researching it and just wound up with him. Okay. But it was by accident. Probably good quality rub. A lot of guys use smoking guns, you know, that type of stuff. We wanted something a little different. You know, uh, that's where uh, barbecue people help barbecue people. That's what the brotherhood's about. It's it about, is. Uh, it is. You're finding out information through. Because at the end of the day, it's just about making the best barbecue anybody in the whole world can think about. It is. Absolutely. We was on the radio show uh, 1270 AM with... Uh, Tommy Young and it was funny and we got to talking about rubs and barbecue sauces and, and he kept looking around and said man I'm getting hungry in here <laughs> he said that's a lot of big time cooking of course uh, I guess uh, the owner Randy out there he's good friends with Chris Little oh okay you know, Chris Little and Big Bob Gibson yeah he's big time and uh, he's probably the most gifted guy that I know just taking spices and just mixing it up. He, he, he knows the art of a rub. You know, that's a challenge for barbecue superstars. We're going to have to get Chris Lilly on the camera and get an interview and because uh, I've heard his name all over St. Louis. And He's a multiple world champion. Is he? As a young man. Yeah. He's good. I noticed on your ribs that you didn't put mustard. Uh, do you feel like they pretty much bind? They'll bind to the rib. A lot, a lot slower, shorter cook. A lot shorter. Okay. You see what I'm saying? The the rib, what we call grease, a lot quicker than a brisket. So it automatically, in our opinion, it draws. It'll draw the uh, the rub. Those are actually home ribs. 
Now that's interesting. Uh, we had another team down there in uh, Lakeland, and man, he put so much rub on his ribs, but his was uh, uh, brown sugar based that you couldn't even see that there was any ribs there. I mean, yeah. Was, and uh, but uh, when you get to the, the flavor of the rib, when you go to eating it, you're eating the the rub. I mean, you can't yeah. even taste the meat. Yeah, we try to stay away from that. Now, if we're in the backyard at home, my wife loves a real sweet rib, so we'll do a brown sugar honey type thing. Okay. Uh, me and my brother like the hot and spicy dry rub. But with these particular rubs right here, once they marry to the meat and start to break down, they'll kind of go away. Oh, really? You know, it won't be a heavy crusted. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of bark on it. Yeah. You don't need that on a rib. Of course, we do sauce our ribs. Okay. And you use the cattleman sauce? No. Oh, oh okay. We do it in stores. Oh, we, do in a, store. we do a homemade sauce for our competition. Okay. But there is some cattleman's in it. Okay. Cattleman Sauce is a great big company, and uh, we were in uh, Columbia Motor Speedway, CMS on the website if you go on events, and uh, uh, there were several teams out there. They just got the gallon of Cattleman's out, and poured it on in the big old collar. It's a it's a great it's a great sauce uh, out of the box. Now, friends, they got four members on their team. We've got two members over here preparing the ribs, and then we've got him rubbing the rub on. It. Look at that brisket. Now you can see that brisket starting to juice up a little bit. Man, and you can just see the work that the rub's doing. And uh, now we actually had, there's a guy on the radio. Oh my God, I gotta make him eat it one more time. He said, there's no need to put a rub on a butt or a brisket. And what's your reaction to that? Gotta have a rub on a brisket. Uh, just for added, and there again, your rub's not gonna overpower your beef, but there is some chemical reactions that go on with the rub that helps break down fatty tissues and that type of stuff. Then you have the flavoring of your bark, and yes, and some of it's gonna get through the meat, some of it does get down in there couple hours in your cook is the most you're going to get uh, your... Yeah, once the smoke ring forms and that's yeah. it. Let's see. Yeah. And then you can do use your mops or sprays or whatever whatever it is you do. Mm -hmm. Look at them beautiful ribs. Now friends, i tell you what. If you want to learn how to cook barbecue, you need to get out here with Daddy's Barbecue. Dad's barbecue and uh, cook with them. Get out here and compete against them. And something about just being down here around the competition, it just, it's like osmosis. You end up learning a whole bunch, don't you? Absolutely. Look at all that. Because we sure don't know it all. It's a work in progress. You know, that's really the theme that you hear all the way through barbecue is that uh, it is a work in progress and uh, Royce. Royce Patterson of Rolls Royce Ribs was on the uh, thing and he was talking about using pecan butter to flavor his ribs and, and all these different little fruit things. And, yeah. uh, a lot of people like apple, peach, pecan. You know, it all depends on what your what flavor profile you're trying to extract out of. Well, look at the, look at the juice and the flavor that's pulling up on that. It's just amazing. And I believe that's Dad right there. You're the owner, right? Dad, yeah, you're best look in the back door. <laughs> okay. He's got three restaurants located. Uh, where are they located at? We've got uh, two in Aspen, Alabama, and one in uh, Rainbow City. Okay, wow. Now, he's going to be uh, our star on our next episode. Uh, we'll have a one-hour episode in Dad's Barbecue. We want to get down to his restaurants and shoot his restaurants so we can connect that with the episode. Uh, because I tell you, we pulled up on a site here, and uh, there's something special, clean, decent, really exciting about his his whole setup here, and uh, that's why we chose him to, to try to do the prep. It's just very to see 
<laughs> oh, okay, you've already got some stuff loaded on there. Or, oh, no, you're just getting it hot. Okay. See, that's a southern pride cooker right there, isn't it? Okay. Now, we've seen them trim them ribs. We've seen them uh, put uh, rub on the ribs. Now we're going to see them load them on the... Tell what temperature, uh, Dad, do you have uh, your, your cooker right now? This is 250. Well, now what we're just going to do, we're going to... Uh, Cook some uh, Cajun sausage, some okay. burnt hams, just to have for appetizers for later on the day. Okay. And just sit around and enjoy ourselves. We won't do anything else with this other stuff until tonight. Tonight. We gotta have stuff to eat during the day. I heard that Cajun sausage. That sounds good. Look at them sauces. Yeah. That's beautiful, man. How you like those? <laughs> <laughs> hey, can I get about half a dozen of those take with me? Sure. <laughs> yeah. They'll be a little better in a few minutes. <laughs> okay. Boy, you can feel that heat out here. Uh, he's getting ready to put them sausages on there. And, man, you know that's going to be good. Since the sausages are already pre-processed, what you're looking to do here is to get that smoke flavor pushed in there. Right. How good a job will this thing do at uh, penetrating that membrane and putting the smoke in there? Really good. It really? does well, yeah. This, uh, we have these in the, in the restaurants. We have each, each store has two Southern Prides in them. And it, we just, we live by them. I mean, it's, uh, we, it's never let us down. And so far, it cooks everything up pretty good for us. Now friends, you don't have to have a Southern Pride cooker in order to, uh, you know, cook these sausages, but uh, Dad has just went above and beyond the call, and he's got some fantastic food, so if you see this video and you're in Alabama, uh, you need to get on down to his restaurant and try out what he's got going on. Uh, you've seen the way that he just did his brisket and ribs, and uh, I can only imagine how good these uh, sausages are going to be. What kind of menu do you run in your rest restaurants? Uh, we have a basic menu. We have uh, chicken, you know, chicken thighs, chicken quarters, chicken breasts. We have the barbecue pork, um, ribs, rustic stew, uh, collard greens, cornbread, uh, barbecue beans, a little bit of everything. Uh, what what does your basic plate run uh, dollar amount? Is it like a uh, ten dollar plate? No, it's uh, seven nineteen. Seven dollars and nineteen cents. Hey, Drew, pull the truck around. We got to get on over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey man, can you do it? Oh, good, yeah, Drew, good. It's not an empty tour. Hey, that's the first official uh, interview that Drew's done. I got him on the radio a little bit last night. We're going to season up these burning ends and then put those in there. Oh, okay, great. Cover with a little more oak ridge, and that's how uh, cooking brisket all started off. Was there was some restaurant in Kansas or somewhere, and uh, they started serving burnt ends. And after a while, people were asking for burnt ends as much as they were the other stuff. So that's how brisket. At least that's the story I heard. Have you ever heard anything like that? I'm not sure. Sounds good. <laughs> No waste. 
Okay, so Dan himself, he put the burn ends in there and we're ready to go. Hey, we're down here in Tallahassee and we got some fine looking young people here. Uh, who are you here with, buddy? I'm with my sister. Okay, what's your sister do? Um, she sells Girl Scout cookies. Oh, okay, and uh, you selling for your troop? Yes, I am. I'm selling for Troop 212. Okay, and uh, how much money are you trying to raise? More than a thousand, I hope. Wow, and are you going to use it for any special purpose? I really don't know yet. Okay. All right. A Dodge or a Chevy or what size truck, what kind of truck you got? Only truck there is. What is it? Dodge. Dodge, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, what kind of service have you had out of your Dodge, the Cummins diesel and all that? It's got about 200,000 miles on it. Never had any problem. Okay. Ain't no old drive. Wow. This thing about Dodge better like the color of it. You ain't gonna wear it out. Your uh, pulling capacity, the pulling like uh, uh, big trailers and all this, it never has any problems doing it, though. We pulled all this, we brought everything and the kitchen sink. Had no problem. How many miles a year do you think you put on your Dodge pulling stuff? Uh, probably 20, 25,000 a year. Wow, see, that's a lot of pulling miles. Uh, and it stood up to it well. Backwoods cookers. Oh, backwoods? And uh, where, where do you use your backwoods cookers? What type of application do you put them on? They, uh, we use backwoods for our brisket, uh, pork butts, chicken, along with the southern fries. Okay. Backwoods out of Louisiana, Mark McGowan. I'm going to have to get them on the website. Uh, you know, our website, as far as uh, cookers and stuff, it's all free, and uh, we'll just have to find it and put a link on. Uh, Backwoods Cookers. Absolutely. Now, friends, I don't know if you noticed, but when he when he loaded that brisket down with uh, apple juice a minute ago, it actually blew up. There. Look at there. It's actually blowing up. Wow, man, that's big time. Look, friends. You need to inject, you need to put on rubs. Don't let anybody tell you not to put a rub on. If they tell you not to put a rub on, they don't know what they're talking about. Now these are your competition uh, briskets right here. You won't be vending with these. This is for the big money. Yes, sir. Okay. Oh yeah. There ain't nothing like hanging out on a Friday night and a Saturday at the competition, is there? No, sir. Have you ever been to like a 2.30 meeting where they drink coffee or hang out just a little bit down at the tent? Uh, yeah. Yeah, man. Get up in the middle of the night and everybody's, you're tired, but you're competing and you're working and then everybody goes and hangs out. That's, that's part of the barbecue brotherhood. Yes, sir. Okay, let's see what this young man is doing over here. He's still pulling off that little extra fat. What's your name, buddy? Justin. Justin, and how old are you? 14. Okay. And uh, is uh, Dad your dad? Uh, Jonathan. Okay, John is your dad. Okay. What do you think about uh, competing in barbecue? I think it's pretty fun. Hey, look at there. Now, he got a big spoon. Now, we were down in uh, Winter Lakeland, and uh, this guy was struggling, struggling, struggling to get the fat off with a pair of pliers 
and a knife, and I want you to look at this young fella. He got him a great big old spoon, and he's killing it. Man, that's some big information right there. Okay, that was too thick for the spoon, so he's going to start it and pull it off with a knife there. to take a moment to make a shout out to Soul to Earth. Soul to Earth is signed on with Barbecue Superstars. They're officially our band and we want to make a shout out to Odell. Hey Odell, I don't know where you're at, but hey buddy, Barbecue Superstars cares about you. Get your guitar out and sing one. Is she with your team or is she uh Yes, that's that's why. Watch, okay. I'll have to get over there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, we thought we was going to get an interview with Dad's wife, but it didn't quite work out. Yeah. Okay, they wrapped the brisket in plastic. And... Okay, it looks like you've already uh, uh, done some of your butts and all. You got them prepped all ready the butts to go. Are ready and okay. That's the brisket. Okay, that's Dad's barbecue. Out of. Uh, Anderson, Alabama. And they just about got all their meat ready to go. What do you think, Drew? Uh, looking like it's ready to rock and roll to me. <laughs> okay, next up we got. Okay, next up we got Water Dog, and I tell you what, that Water Dog guy is uh, some kind of cool. He actually had a, a pump that built pressure, and he injected his brisket with the pump, and. Uh, that's one thing. The toughest thing to cook in any barbecue competition is brisket. And we've got a lot of footage and video, and we want to show you the way that Water Dog does it. What kind of device uh, that you're injecting with? Yes, sir. So, uh, and this is just an old carpet. I mean, uh, so it didn't cost anything to move it. And he's like, I'll tell you where you want to go. Okay, let's go. Okay, that's actually an injection system. That's yeah. the deluxe injection. So that's purposely made for this purpose. Well, I've never seen it before. So you probably get more pressure on your injection than... Uh, a little bit. I mean, you got to kind of watch it. It's, it's kind of a little bit more more touch than anything else. So they had to sit there and feel on it while, while it's going in. The dial's kind of touching. Oh, now you took your fat off the top. Oh, yes, sir. Wow. Yes, sir. Okay, that's a different 
Uh, what's your rationale for taking the fat off the top? Um, it's got enough fat inside the meat to, okay. to, to give it enough flavor. We don't want all that fat to cook through it. And uh, if we wash it real good and inject it real good, it'll um, do a good job. It, it'll do a good job. You just got to low and slow, man. Woo! Squirt on you. Uh oh, yeah. When they start getting full, it shoots it all over, doesn't it? Oh wow, man, that thing filled up and it's running out of the side there. Well, that's big time. Mm -hmm. I like the music, man. Who is that? <laughs> it's probably Two Live Crew. Oh, Two Live Crew. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, Chuck over here is old school. I like the way you got that in that big bowl and the, and the marinade just stays right on. Yeah, I mean, we, we used to do it out on the cutting board and, I mean, all your marinade runs down. It's running off and, away from it, yeah. Um, and we're, we're a good five hours away from throwing it on anyway, so might as well catch it. Let it stay in there. Marrying the meat to the marinade is the whole idea to start with. Yeah. Well, this one has a full stainless steel tray. Let's make all the fat we trimmed off. We're re-adding the weight in uh, liquid. That's good. That's good weight. Well, I want you to look now. There's a substantial amount on the bottom, and it's just about all gone. So he's laying into it, boys. Should have been about a gallon. About a gallon. These yeah. two briskets. Yeah, one's a flat, one's a power. <laughs> when are you going to prep your Boston buds? Um, I think that's going to be later tonight. Later tonight, okay. I think that's when our other buddy gets here. So we, we have to leave some work for him. Okay. Otherwise, he feels left out. I tell you, you can smell that. Boy, that smells like good marinade on there. We got a case a couple weeks ago and burned through it. We got, we got hooked up, we got a phone call to get a first guy that wanted us to do a whole lot. And we're done. And that's it. What's the name of your team? Uh, team Water Dog. Team Wonder Dog. Water Dog. Water. Water, Water Dog. Dog. Team Water Dog. What's your name? Josh. Josh. Hey, Josh. Thanks a lot hey, for man. giving them meat prep. Yes, sir. Okay, next up, we got Myron. Myron Mixon or, or Bubba Q or, or uh, low, low Slow or some guy with a Volkswagen or something. Or, Drew, do you know what I'm supposed to do next? <laughs> Make an interview. Help it out. See what's happening. Ah, shoot. Oh, heck. Okay. That's all right. I watch your show sometimes. Oh, you do? Barbecue yeah. Superstar? Mm -hmm. Yay! Yeah. yeah. Weren't you the one filming with Tuffy got DQ? Yeah. yeah. I've watched that in slow motion, man. I just think if they took it, it should have been good. That was one second. I mean, it was less than one second. Yeah, it was close. It was close. I really felt sorry for Tuffy because he could have won. I talked to him and 
He said, watch it slow, my man. Tell me what you think. He didn't fuss about it. I'd have to appeal it. <laughs> you know, the one thing about it on our side is that, uh, you know, we walked out and uh, was going to forget about it. I mean, she took it, so I thought that was the end of it. Well, you know, that's what I thought, too. But there was uh, four competitors in the parking lot that watched him run across the parking lot, came to the door, and then, uh, you know, demanded to see the film. And we had a couple other people walk up. And uh, so that's how it all went down. Well, I won't say what I think of them other people then. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the one reason I did go ahead and put it up then on the thing is I don't want to interpret. Everybody's emailing me and everything. Yeah. And I said, I have no interpretation. I mean, you look at the video and you see, you decide for yourself because I don't know what happened, you know. And, uh, but Yeah, I'm through except for not trying to brisket. Oh, good. We can check that. Yeah, you can. Okay, thank you. You got the ziplock thing right here. Now, friends, if you remember, uh, the fellow in Texas was talking about brisket was twelve ninety nine to $20 a pound in Texas. $12.99. 12 16 pounds. 16 pounds. 16 and a quarter, and it uh, was $100. 100 bucks. Uh, it's a Wagyu. Okay, oh, Wagyu. That's the name. We've been trying to remember that name for the last week. Uh, Snake River Wagyu. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. yeah we get All right, now that is the Mac Daddy baby. That's the one. We had a Walmart special over there, but now we've got the Wagyu. Yeah. So you guys are in it to we win it, aren't you? Huh? We don't do Walmart. Yeah. You guys are in it to win it. Yeah. I love brisket. Well, what about the brisket? Do you like uh, the the beef smoke flavor or what? What or the seasoning or the way it comes off or? Well, that's all. That's all the way I've ever eaten it. So. Okay. She loves it though. I love it. I like the. Brownies. Uh, yeah, the little brownies. Yeah. Yeah, the burnt tips or whatever on. Burnt ends, yeah. brownies. Everybody got different names. What we do, we just come back we learn from one of the best. Myron Nixon taught us how to do that. brisket. Just inject every square inch. Did you go to one of his schools? Or? Yes, I did. About three years ago, and we turned around a thousand percent after the fact. No kidding. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. We were actually uh, down in his uh, uh, classics uh, memories class. Okay. Uh, yeah, I saw y'all. That's where I watched some of the videos on there that y'all had on your your site from yes, where sir. Michael is actually uh, formed a new team called New New Jack South. Oh, really? His son, Michael, I know he was in up there. Oh, the class. he did? He's cooking. Well, they formed it so he could cook GBA when Myron's doing this. He's cooking his first GBA event in Perry, Georgia this weekend. Oh, that's Wow. Fantastic. Which one was Michael? Was he the taller one? Uh, or he's the shorter. Yeah, guy he's just like hair. Myron. Yeah. 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 He's just like Myron. He's cooking his first event this weekend. Wow. In Perry, Georgia, in the Georgia Barbecue Association. My partner, Raymond Poor, he's the president of the GBA. Okay. Now, we're going to be doing a radio show on AM 1270 in Cartersville, Georgia, tomorrow at 1 o'clock, and we'll have Jim Stansel on the radio. Okay. And uh, if the man that's over the GPA is interested in calling in, we'd love to have him on if there. He's, not, he's cooking by himself this weekend, just like we are. Oh, he's so his he, wife. So he's busy. He, at 1 o'clock, he'll be doing uh, some type of turn-in. Hello? Y'all having a lot of success with this right here? I tell you what, man. Uh, it's a growing sport. It, it is a growing sport, and uh, uh, we've got a, we're have got we starting to get a pretty good following. Uh, yeah, that's the first time I, I talked to Tuffy. He said, man, go check out the site. He told me where it was. I watched all the videos on y'all's site. Oh, wow. Well, we sure do appreciate it. We're just trying you know, we're just so trying to create a barbecue platform. That's interesting. Yeah. She, you can ask her. I stay on the computer about barbecue trying to learn new little tricks here. This, this is... This is a method that we were taught. Yes, sir. We use a completely different recipe than Myron. Uh huh. But uh, we changed a few things. His techniques are what's uh -huh. really help folks. Yeah. And now, uh, what class you, uh, did you go to? Uh, how long ago was it? July of 07. 07? 07 or 08. 07, I think. And I guess that was his competition class, huh? Yes, it was. That's great. Take care, Jay. See you.
Hi, Stephanie. Yeah, Jay and I were at Olive Garden. He was 20 minutes away. And he said he got to go back to work. <laughs> he said he needed to get to be in there. It's fine. We can get to Walmart. That's a low, slow, uh, he's a nice guy. We yeah, just, yeah, just yeah. They, yeah. they compete. Um, they came in, I think, uh, third overall in points in the Georgia Association. Oh, wow. Year. Their first FBA, they actually reserved grand. And I don't remember where they were. But real good friends of ours, mm -hmm. which I think everybody out here is are, are real good friends, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, you meet new friends every time you come to these events, and it's just like it's like a brotherhood. Oh, the guy, <laughs> a, little, a little kiss on the cheek, huh? No, I didn't have to do that, did I? <laughs> I got her with water earlier. Oh, did you? I was looking at the water, and it realized I was putting a splitter on between me and Budmeister over here. Oh, man. It realized one side was hitting me. Turned it on. She had a good shot. Off. She had a good change of makeup. Oh, good. But he got me good. He got. He got nothing compared to. Yeah. Oh, it's all over the face. Thank you. The dangers. The dangers of uh of injection, huh? That's why. The dangers of injection. That's great. But I'm not telling any Meyer secrets by doing this. Ninety percent of the folks out here do this. Yeah. Nah. You're. He's been a great asset, me and real good friend. He is. He, he truly. He's a great guy. He's, I mean, he's not the bad that bad man. He was made out to be on the pit match. Not, not at all. Not at all. He's one of the nicest guys we've ever met. I mean, he's just been really yeah. great to yeah. us and our website. Did he teach brisket to the guys in the classic class. We, yeah, yeah. Um, it was all old school. The way his dad taught yeah. him. Um, pits so so yeah, exactly. It wasn't uh, any um, uh, any competition. Yeah, grade. That's that he was going back to mm -hmm. old. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you one question about that. Since uh, I did, a, I just did a one-hour episode on it on the website and on YouTube. Uh, he used white vinegar. What do you think about that? I think, me personally, I hate competition sauce. I love vinegar sauce. That's okay. Me. So white vinegar would be all right. Mm -hmm. Okay. We actually, uh, our injection is an apple sauce base, apple juice base, mm -hmm. rather. And we put vinegar in our injection. Heck yeah. Okay. It helps break it down. So not apple cider, but white. Mm -hmm. Okay. We don't use apple cider. Okay. Wow. We do in our our actual sauce that we make to sell. To sell. That we can eat with and we enter sauce. Yeah. Ours has apple juice and then apple cider. But not apple juice. Apple sauce. It's uh -huh. apple sauce base. Oh. And apple cider. Apple cider vinegar and some other. Red do y'all have some of that sauce here? No. no. We sold out. We're waiting on our next order. Oh, heck. That's fantastic. Would, would that be under Rescue Smokers, your sauce? Yes. Okay. Rescue Smokers, we don't have a website. We have a My, a MySpace and a Facebook. Okay. We've got a guy supposed to be doing us a uh, website locally, but we haven't got with him yet. So you were 2010 GBA Team of the Year? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And state champions this past year. We're actually ranked, I think, 23rd in the nation right now. Wow, man. 5,500 teams. Yeah, which, so you're a major which, competitor. Which, which this cook here, you've got, what, probably 20 of the top 35 teams in the nation. In the this, nation, right here. Cook. you got barbecue, you got Forest Fine Foods, you've got us, you've got uh, uh, Jack's Old South is going to be here. You've got uh, LC Cook right here, Cook's Portable Smokehouse. Good competition here. Yeah. And that's it. Okay. I'm going to turn it over and wrap her up. And Voila. Meet, meet side down. And, now, what time will you put yours on? Midnight? We're going to put these on at 9.30 tonight. 9.30. Well, 9 that's interesting. We've, we've heard all kinds of different times, so that's... We go real real slow. Real, real slow. slow. You're low and slow. Okay, we go about 225 degrees to time to What's your opinion on uh, all these teams trying to do hot and fast now? It works. I mean, look at Myron Mix and uh, uh, Mount Dora. You know, he cooks, cooks fast and furious. Mm -hmm. It works for him, but... Uh, he taught me this method, so that's what he did. That's great. And I, and I think our cookers cook better slow. We use stumps. We have a stump stretch. So. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stumps in Florida and Georgia. They like them stumps down that's here. That's a good cooker. It is. You put 15 pounds of coals in it, cook for 19 hours without touching it. Wow. Get your brisket and everything done, do the whole thing. Oh. I mean, it's economically a good deal, you know, and you don't have to pick. But, you know, throw that wood in there all night. It was Myron, you know, folks like Myron and, and Mount Dora, they start about 4.35 in the morning. They're, they're ready when we are. They get a good night's sleep. Wow. We get a good night's sleep, too, you know. Once we put on it 9.30 or 10, we lay down at 5. 
Well, what do you think in the stump smoker? It's the insulation. It's kind of like them two metal walls and all that insulation. It just, and then it seals it. All I'll say is we won one grand champion prior to that stump stretch. We bought it last January, mm -hmm. Stephanie and I did. We surprised the team with it. And since then, we've won nine grand champions. God almighty so, knows, man. Proof's in the pudding. Don't stump cooker. <laughs> <laughs> so, 2010 GBA Team of the Year, Rescue Smokers. That's it. Nice to meet y'all. Hey, really enjoy your show. Now, friends, that ain't chocolate. That's barbecue sauce. <laughs> I don't think so. These guys cook. They ain't even playing. Bubba Q. Bubba Q's winning a whole bunch of competitions. I'll tell you what, he's got it going on. Bubba Q. Oh my God, we just found out his air conditioner went out. What happened? We had the air conditioner fi fixed at Vero Beach Chrysler Dodge in their service department. Again, that was 69,000 miles and a $2,000 bill. And I drove 60 miles and the air conditioner went out again. I called the service man while I was rolling down the highway. I gave 40, you know, this truck sticker for $45,000. You would think, you know, you might get a few amenities with it, but uh, I called him and said, you know, I made it 60 miles and my AC went out again. And his response was, well, just thump on the dash a few times, maybe it'll come back on. God, for $45,000? That came from Chrysler's. So I don't. I don't think I'm interested in dumping on the dash. How about you, Drew? No way, Jose. <laughs> Get oh, a Ford. Yeah. Get a Ford.